Hi everyone, Dan from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about domain controller credential harvesting and specifically a version that APT28 and Hafnium has been using recently. So jumping right into it, um, starting with the MITRE ATT&CK page of what NDTS is and why it matters. Um, so on Active Directory, um, there's a database that stores the users, the groups, a lot of the information for the domain controller. Um, and that's in a file called, a database file called ntds.dit. Now what's interesting with this file is that normally it's not accessible um, to the running process. So you can't just go and get it on your domain controller. Um, you actually have to use several techniques to access that file on the domain controller itself. But once you have it, you can take that to Kali um, or to whatever tools you're using and actually dump out all of the usernames and passwords from that. Um, so what I want to point out on the MITRE page for this tactic, um, that's essentially what the attacker is doing. They're getting that ntds.dit database file, taking it out and using it. Like I said, there's multiple ways to do it because you can't just get it real time. Um, and we'll go over three ways. Um, but those ways are volume shadow copy um, and then also living on their land. There's a tool called ndtsutil. .exe that actually we'll hop into next. Um, but this is good to know because when you're looking for these techniques, what you'll look for are the artifacts that are associated with whatever that choke point is that the attacker used to get to it. Um, as I said, the recent CISA nation state report um, that went out two weeks ago um, about intrusions into the clear de or clear defense contractors um, this was actually a technique that was featured in that report. And beyond that, there's known to be APT28 and Hafnium usage of it. So the examples that we're going to use today, we went out um, in this blog from Red Team Experiments. Um, we're going to look at the detection side of this blog. So if you look this blog up, um, it'll walk you through um, the steps they used. We'll also talk through them today. But this was the basis. This blog was kind of the basics of command that we use or commands that we used on our demo today. So jumping right into it, and this was actually the um, quoted example on the MITRE page that APT28 used. Um, you can just use ntdsutil.exe and essentially create a backup copy of the database where you want to. Um, so living on the land approach is just using something that's built into Windows. This doesn't require um, a specific tool. As you can see from the command prompt, um, you get quite a lot of output there. Um, and then on the right, what happens, that's actually what the output directory, what gets written out there. So, you know, the top directory where you write to two folders are created. Under that, you have active directory with the nt, ntds.dit. And then you also get the system and security hives from the registry. Um, hopping back over, what's interesting, if you look at that command prompt is, we see a snapshot being taken. We see defragmentation, the middle part and defragmentation status. All of this actually becomes really important to understand how you might see um, this technique being used in your environment. So. Method one, again, is just using ntdsutil.exe. This is done on the domain controller, um, and you can just pull the database right off. Once you have the database, so we took the database off the domain controller we created earlier today. It was a server 2016 um, domain or image. Um, and with that system hive, security hives, and the ntds.dit, you can drop it into impact at secret stump. Um, and if you look towards the bottom of this image here of the command prompt, you can see the hashes for um, some of the different users that were on this domain controller. So again, all you need are the one command, the NTDS util command on the previous slide, and then this command, and you actually have the hashes right out. Um, in case you can't read the prompt, uh, or in case you can't read the command line, that orange box below has the command line that's um, that we use to run this command. So starting to look at, well, what are we going to see if an attacker does this, right? Because um, like we said, APT28 did use NTDS util. Um, starting at one event log that probably not a lot of people look at um, because it's not one of those top three, right? System security applications that everyone knows about. They know about those three and maybe the PowerShell event logs. 
Um, but anytime you touch directory service, there's going to be a log that's generated. And so in this case, we saw that backup um, and defragmentation that we saw previously um, from the command prompt when you ran it, there are events that are going to be created in the directory service application log. Um, as we can see, the event 1917 is the backup and the 700 and 701 are the defragmentation. So there are directory service backup logs that are created that are super useful for looking for this. And these are things that when you're going through um, event logs, you should be looking at. Also so, and we stuck with what was run in the command. Interestingly, they ran it through PowerShell to call cmd.exe. And what's interesting is if you look at in the XML at the bottom of this, if you go to those PowerShell event logs and you look at the um, engine lifecycle, so the event 400, 403, we actually see the command prompt down there of PowerShell calling ntdsutil.exe with the option. So again, this is another way to see or to see the actual command line that this was called with. Um, it's another way of seeing if an attacker ran it with this um, with this approach. Obviously, if they don't run it with PowerShell, it's not going to log in here. Um, but you know, this again is a great opportunity that. If you're looking for things to parse out of the PowerShell logs, this is something you absolutely should look for. So that was the with the NTDS util.exe, kind of a living on the land option of directly using the NTDS utility to dump it out. Um, the other way that a lot of or that a few groups have used to do this is out of the volume shadow copy. So when you actually create a volume shadow copy, um, these files get preserved in it. Um, so again, using dishshadow.exe, which is another built-in tool there, you can build the shadow.txt file as it was built in the blog. All they did was, you know, they set metadata, they set the volume to do, they mounted it. In this case, we mounted it to the Z drive. Um, that's what that text file up at the top does. So it tells, basically sets the options for dish shadow um, for where it's going to write out this, um, you know, where it's going to write out this volume shadow copy. Um, and as you can see in the command prompt there, it goes through, it creates that volume shadow copy, it creates the aliases, and then finally it says, okay, the shadow copy was exposed at that Z drive. If you were to scroll there, um, the Z drive shown in that bottom right image, you can see that Z drive, you do have the Windows and NTDS folder, and we've gotten that NTDS.dit, which is that database file we need, if you remember from the step one, it's the same NTDS dot that we need um, to pull those password hashes out, to pull all of the domain hashes out. Um, so again, with this, it's important to know that you will also need to get the system and security hive some um, because that's what was needed in Kali, right, to pull those out. Um, but this shows another way, another path that an attacker might use using a different command to pull the uh, NTDS dot did file out. Now, again, what's going to be different here is that it's going to create or it's going to cause Windows to do different things and different parts of the Windows auditing system um, are going to fire different alerts on this. So in this case, if you look, go back to the system event logs, um, the service control manager actually looks for volume shadow copy events. So here, event 7036, um, we can see that volume shadow copy is running. So again, with context, this can, you know, this can be something we look for to be like, okay, well, you know, what, when the attacker was on this box, we saw a volume shadow copy, what was kind of happening in that time frame or what was going on here. This might be one of the breadcrumbs you see and while alone, it might not be useful. Um, you know, this is one you definitely can pair. Um, but the important thing to note here is that, you know, running that previous command will the will um, generate these events out of that. Um, it's a trickier one, hopping back there, it is a trickier one. Um, this second approach definitely is not as loud as the first one we showed as in TDS util. Um, really what here is you have to look for is that volume shadow copy service. So the third approach um, is actually one you can do over the network. So if you have a domain admin account, um, you can just directly connect to the domain controller and do this with Impacket Secret Stump. So the same tool that um, decoded the database and was able to dump out the hashes, 
you can actually give it the just just DC option and give it the domain and um, username. So domain our domains domain our domain usernames administrator because we left it default. It'll ask you for the password and then what it's going to go through is do the same series of events, connect to the domain controller. Um, you know, it's going to use the DRS UAPI method to get it, and then it's going to dump the hashes out. So you don't even have to log onto the box if you have um, domain admin creds. So let's talk about what this looks like for how you might detect it. You know, from the network side, one of the challenges is you're going to see this session setup request in SMB. <clears throat> so in this case, we saw that um, domain administrator account log into the box. And then after that, everything is encrypted SMB. This is where you're actually going to run into a challenge finding this if you're just looking for this technique from the network. Um, you know, you might say, well, domain admin shouldn't log in from that box. And so that might be your starting point of saying, hey, it's it's kind of anomalous for it's weird for a domain admin to come in on this box. Um, because if all you're using is network, um, you're not going to have the context you need as shown here. Everything else is encrypted. Um, so this is where it's important, again, to understand what the limits are going to be between network and host data. But when we do actually hop into that host data and we start to look at the logs for it, if we look at the classic, you know, the security 4624 login, um, here we see the uh, IP address for the successful login for this account for the domain administrator account. We have the source IP address, that 192.168.10.1. So if you're looking for this specific version of the technique, um, you will at least be able to get the IP address of, hey, what was the previous hop that this happened around? Um, the other interesting part after this is you're going to have that login. And then a part that is really audited, again, there are those directory service access audits. So you can see above that, we have our login, and then we have a bunch of... Uh, audits of the directory service database. So again, when you're looking for something that's behavioral, um, if you have a weird login with that admin account, then you have a bunch of directory service access. Um, you know, you might say, hey, this, this is beginning to look a little like this technique. <clears throat> so in summary, an attacker might use NTDS to, to compromise on the domain controller. Um, you can do it locally. The first two options showed it with the command prompt. The third option showed it just remotely using Kali. Um, it can be done with command line commands or remotely, like I said. Um, different techniques are going to generate different artifacts. So in the first case, we saw a very loud technique um, to where there were a lot of event logs. The second, there weren't as much. Um, and then finally, in the third, it generated quite a bit, but you needed both hosts and networks. So, you know, this shows the importance of really understanding when you're breaking down a certain tactic or technique or what an attacker is doing, kind of understanding where the edge cases are, what, what the true coverage of um, either the data source you're using or the analysis source, what it actually gets you at the end of the day. So hopefully this helped you out. Um, we tried to kind of keep this focused on the technique, um, but definitely interesting technique. Um, if you have ideas, like please send them our way um, and keep in touch. Thanks a lot.